Hi everybody, thank you for tuning into another video. Today we're going to be unboxing, installing and doing a speed test on Samsung's uh, later 980 Pro 2 terabyte NVMe SSD. So I picked this up um, in the last couple of days on the Amazon Prime Day deals. I've got a good price on it, so I thought I'd upgrade. Um, what are my upgrades? So this here, this is my PC. You've probably seen this on the channel a few times when I had a faff with up trying to buy a new graphics card that didn't work out in the end, unfortunately. But the power supply that you saw in previous videos, Corsair SF750 is still in there. I decided to keep that over the 800 watt, um, what was it, the Silverstone. Um, so it fits a bit nicer in the case, provides a bit more airflow. Um, this is sitting in an end case M1. So as you can see, it's basically absolute tiny little powerhouse of a machine. I've got my Zotac 1080 back in there because thanks to the scalpers, there are no cards available. So there we go, I'm stuck with that until I can get a 3090. And on the rear side, this is gonna be a very easy installation. So on the rear side, I have direct access to the NVMe drive. So the drive in here at the moment is a uh, Western Digital Black SN 750 drive. The 850s, by the way, are awesome drives. Um, but this time I've decided I'll switch back to a Samsung drive. Um, so Western Digital Black SN 850, if you can get yourselves one of those awesome drives. I can't quite remember how they compare speed-wise to these. I think they're roughly the same. Might even be a bit faster on the writes. This one is stated on paper to achieve read speeds of up to 7 thousand so seven terabytes per second effectively seven thousand megabytes per second right um so that's going to be very interesting let's go ahead and open this up see what we've got in the box will i need the knife I probably will all right it opens from here so let's quickly open it get the drive out let's do an install and then what i'm uh, i'm going to go in effectively I've, I've backed this up so i'm going to do a restore using acronis i've backed it up restore onto here and then fire it up once it's fired up, hopefully successful without any issues. I'll go ahead and uh, record a speed test and you can see the speed test towards the end of the video. So there is the drive in the case, sort of standard Samsung packaging for the NVMe drives in a plastic housing, securely uh, clipped into this box here. And there is the drive. Um, I think this little bit, this insert here comes out and there's probably a bit of paper underneath but we're not really going to need that just for the sake of completeness i'll quickly show you there it is um i don't know what we're going to get in here in terms of information but i'm not going to bother looking at that because it's probably not much to read let's go ahead and get this drive out so my trusty screwdriver that you've probably also no doubt seen in videos stanley screwdriver designed like a pen it's got straights and it's got phillips great little tool to have in your kit bag when your laptop bag very useful it costs four pound on amazon if you want a link let me know i can send it to you very very useful so here comes the sn750 it's got a heat sink on it this is the heat sink edition so you can see it's a nice chunky drive there very very useful to have heat sink on these things because they get hot now that said this one i haven't got a heat sink on it obviously because it doesn't come with a heat sink so I don't know if I'm going to live to regret this or not. It's probably going to get very hot. The good thing is my case remains open all the time. So it's got some sort of airflow passing past it, I suppose. Um, there it is. Now, once I've screwed this in, that's it. Upgrade done. It's as quick and simple as that. There's not really much more to it when you're upgrading your NVMe drives. Uh, nine out of 10, they're going to screw straight onto a NVMe slot on your board. It's a matter of literally hooking it in place, putting a screw in. So when you push, when you take the screw out, it pops up a little bit at an angle. This one doesn't because of the weight of the heat sink keeps it down. This one, as you might have been able to see, was at a bit of an angle and I pushed it down and screwed it in. When you unscrew it, the drive pops out and you just slide it back out. So it slides out, it pops up to the right angle. Nice and easy, that's done. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and get my, uh, back up from here that I took, restored onto here. Fire this PC up and uh, let's get speed testing. Right, so the drive's in. Um, I've managed to restore a backup that I took with Acronis um, onto the new drive now. 
Uh, one thing to bear in mind straight away was the drive that I was backing up from and replacing the SN750, the Western Digital Disk, was a 1TB NVMe drive. And the drive you saw me install today in this machine was a 2TB Samsung 980 Pro uh, NVMe drive. So as such, as part of the restore, uh, Acronis creates the partitions exactly as they were um, on the previous drive. So previous drive being 1TB, the C drive was allocated most of 1TB minus some reserved partitions um, and boot partitions and etc. So that leaves uh, effectively 1TB roughly of free space which has been unallocated. Now in Windows Disk Management, uh, this is a limitation of Windows, uh, I guess, partition management is it doesn't allow you to extend the C drive because the unallocated space is not actually I guess on the disk physically next to the um, uh, storage that's allocated to the main OS volume which is the C drive in this case so if I quickly bring up my Windows Explorer here what you'll see is uh, exactly what we're seeing there the space allocated here is um, it's exactly like it was on my old OS drive. So it was 930 gig uh, total and it's showing how much is free after all I've used. Um, and I can't extend it. So to be able to extend this, I'm having to install a third party um, partitioning tool uh, or some sort of a partition manager or wizard tool. And there's loads of options out there. This is not an advertising for any particular product, but I've done a little bit of research just to find a uh, decent tool that would probably do what I want it to do that is free. I'm not paying for anything premium here because I don't need any advanced features. Um, and I've downloaded this product called uh, Mini Tool Partition Wizard, Wizard, the free version, because the free version should allow me to just achieve what I want to, which is extend the size of the primary partition using the unused space. So I've already downloaded and installed this to save some time. I haven't yet done the extension of the partition just so I could show you when I do this. Um, so we're going to be doing it on the fly here. So here is the actual tool. Uh, mini tool partition wizard again you can see it's the free version version 12.3 and if we go down the list here you can see uh, this drive here um, is effectively the disk that we are going to be trying to uh, use the unallocated space from to increase the c drive which is my os drive so if i right click on here um, i should have an extend option which i do so i'm going to go ahead and click on extend um, and now you can see that it's all of a sudden detected and allows you to do what Windows doesn't show you or it looks like it's going to work. It's saying you can extend the C drive and you can take free space from the unallocated space on this disk. So I'm going to go ahead and allocate all of the storage because that's what I want. Um, I want the single large volume. I don't want loads of smaller volumes. And you can see that it's showing me the C drive, which is currently 930 gig. The new size of it will be 1826.29 gig. Um, and the new size of unallocated, which was here, will effectively be zero. So that's not going to exist anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And let's just see what happens. Let's see if it does it on the fly. Um, it looks like it's showing me a view of what it's going to look like. So this is not actually being applied yet. And just to prove that it hasn't yet applied it, you can see it's still 930 gig and I'll go ahead and hit refresh there. And what you need to so see, you can either undo the changes. So this is effectively showing you what it's going to look like. And I'm going to go and hit apply. So hopefully this is not going to cause any issues. Applying pending changes, you strongly choose all other applications. So I'm not going to close my recording application because I'm rec screen recording. Hopefully it doesn't cause any issues. Let's just go ahead and click yes. So it's saying it's successfully applied all the changes um, it's now showing that there's no other pending changes and the c drive is indeed uh, using all the space that was free let's go ahead and look at my uh, there we go file explorer and you can see all the space is now allocated to the disk so um, i guess the next thing to do is to run a benchmark against this so uh, let's see if I've got uh, my benchmarking tool to hand. I have, okay, so just ATTR best benchmark. This will do the job for us. C drive is the disk that we're benchmarking. Um, let's go ahead and set the total length to two gig. Um, transfer size is max eight, eight uh, megabytes, so 8192 kilobytes. And let's go ahead and start that test. So I'm just gonna run this test. Let's benchmark the disk. This is an NVMe uh, PCIe 4. Uh, SSD running on a PCIe 4x 
capable port. So um, let's see what we achieve versus the actual um, stated capable maximum of this drive. So on paper, um, the read speeds it can achieve, and it is obviously with um, it, it does actually specify the maximum read speed is seven thousand megabytes or so seven. Um, uh, 7,000 megabytes per second, megabytes per second. That is going to be interesting to see if we can actually achieve that. Um, let's see what happens. I mean, transferring one, where, where am I going to transfer seven gigabytes per second to other than local? The, the, the main benefit of a disk like this is read speed, read speed for large programs, games. So if I'm if I'm playing games, uh, you can see there the write speed is also quite incredible. If I'm playing games um, or you know, video video editing or something like this, and working with large files on the drive itself, so between you're going between the disk and memory potentially, right? Is what is what you're competing for here? Um, is going to give you the benefit of this sort of speed. There's not going to be benefit of this speed in transferring files between one volume and another because there's no other volume or disk in my machine that is capable of this speed. If you've got disks or multiple disks um, that can handle this sort of uh, throughput uh, and multiple ports on the board that can offer you this sort of a transfer speed, then great. Otherwise, not really going to benefit from it. Now, I'm not really sure what's going on here with this benchmark. Um, what are we getting to? So we are gone into the, uh, okay, so the scale has changed um, by the looks of it to megabytes per second. Um, or was it always like that? I might have missed that. Let's see what's going on. So it seems to have uh, hit a peak at the fo smaller file sizes and then it's dropped off again. So let's see with the larger file sizes if it picks up some speed it should because larger files theoretically should allow the drive to speed up um, to a higher speed. Um, it's not really impressive is it? Let's just do that once more. Let's do that once more for good measure and then whatever we get we get. So um, I'm not going to mess around with any settings here. We'll stick to the full range of um, transfer sizes so all the tests and total of two gig and let's just run that again now and let's see how we go might be that i'll have to use another benchmarking tool to see if we can achieve maximum interesting because it it it, it peaked at other 64 kb uh, transfer size and then it just dropped right off maybe the drive's heating up who knows um the case is open it shouldn't be heating up the drive's not on the uh, top side of the motherboard which is surrounded by all the other peripherals it's actually on the underside of the board so it's away from any of the main heat um, but these drives do get extremely hot and i wouldn't be surprised if we're hitting some sort of thermal throttling but just on an initial benchmark i wouldn't really expect it so a bit of a shame there so again just paying attention to the scale here so at the moment the scale is going up to 500 megabytes per second i think what we're going to see is we're going to see the scale change Therefore, the graphs that are being plotted will probably change as well. Let's have a look. Okay, so at the moment, the speed is still going up. We're hitting 800 megabyte read and write per second. So we're 1800 write, uh, 1800 read. This is where it peaked last time, so three and a half. Um, so 3.5 gigabytes right there per second. The read is tailed off um, two and a half, which is interesting again, and you can see it tailing off now. So um, I'm going to mess around with this. I'll try some other benchmarking tools. Uh, you can see the read there is picked up a lot. So you're getting a high read speed of three and a half gigabytes per second roughly, but we're definitely not seeing the maximums that we should be seeing, which is advertised um, on the di on the actual box. Maybe some tuning to do on my port settings. Uh, I'll mess around with it a little bit. If I do achieve better settings uh, that allow me to hit the maximums, I'll post another video to show what I've had to do. I might have to go into the BIOS and see if there's any additional tuning or updates that I can do to achieve the maximum. Uh, maybe some chipset updates or something. So uh, on that note, this is going to finish now. So I'll end the video. 
I will thank you all very much for watching, tuning into another video. Uh, any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try and answer them as best as I can. And also, please don't forget to hit the subscribe in that bottom right hand corner. I would very much appreciate the support that you're showing for the channel and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care and all the best.